Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to discuss the basic digital communication system. So, let us start with it. As you can see, the diagram here represents the block diagram of a simple digital communication system. At the input, we have a digital source which generates a message signal. The transmitter consists of three blocks, namely source encoder, channel encoder, and modulator. The receiver once again consists of three blocks, namely source decoder, channel decoder, and demodulator. The transmitter and receiver are connected by an electrical channel. And the output of the receiver is the user of information, which usually is an end user. Now, let me discuss each of the blocks of the transmitter and receiver in brief detail. I'll start with source encoder. In source coding, the encoder maps the digital signal generated at the source output into another signal in digital form. The resulting sequence of symbols is called the source code word. The mapping is one to one and the objective is to eliminate or reduce redundancy so as to provide an efficient representation of the source output. Since the source encoder mapping is one to one, the source decoder simply performs the inverse operation and thereby delivers to the user destination a reproduction of the original digital source output. It has to be noticed the representation of the output is in fact an estimate of the transmitted signal and usually not an exact replica of the transmitted signal. The primary benefit thus gained from the application of source encoding is a reduced bandwidth requirement. Moving on to the channel encoder. In channel coding, the objective is for the encoder to map the incoming digital signal into a channel input and for the decoder to map the channel output into an output digital signal in such a way that the effect of channel noise is minimized. The output of the channel encoder is called a channel code word. That is, the combined role of channel encoder and decoder provide for reliable communication over a noisy channel. This provision is satisfied by introducing redundancy in a prescribed fashion in the channel encoder and exploiting it in decoder to reconstruct the original encoder input as accurately as possible. Thus, in source coding, we remove redundancy, whereas in channel coding, we introduce controlled redundancy. Talking about the coding, Error control is accomplished by the channel coding operation that consists of systematically adding extra bits to the output of the source coder. These extra bits do not convey any information but helps the receiver to detect and or correct some of the errors in the information bearing bits. There are basically two methods of channel coding. The first one is called block coding in which the encoder takes a block of K information bits from the source encoder and adds R error control bits where R is dependent on K as well as the error controlling capabilities desired. The second coding technique is called convolutional coding. Here the information bearing message stream is encoded in a continuous fashion by continuously interleaving information bits and the error control bits. The channel decoder recovers the information bearing bits from the coded binary stream. Error detection and possible error correction is also performed by the channel decoder. Moving on to the next block, we have modulator. The modulator converts the input bit stream into an electrical waveform suitable for transmission over the communication channel. Modulator can be effectively used to minimize the effects of channel noise, to match the frequency spectrum of transmitted signal with channel characteristics, and to provide the capability to multiplex many signals. On the other hand, the extraction of message from the information bearing waveform produced by the modulation is accomplished by the demodulator. The output of the demodulator is once again a bit stream. The important parameter of the demodulator is in fact the method of demodulation. Lastly, we come to the channel. Communicating data from one location to another requires some form of pathway or medium. These pathways are called communication channels. A channel provides electrical connection between the source and the destination. A large number of channels are available in current technology. 
such as pair of wires, coaxial cables, optical fibers, radio channel, satellite channel or a combination of any of these. The communication channels only have a finite bandwidth, non-ideal frequency response. The signal often suffers amplitude as well as phase distortion as it travels over the channel. Also, the signal power decreases due to the attenuation of the channel. Sometimes the signal is corrupted by unwanted, unpredictable electrical signals which are commonly referred to as noise. The important parameters of the channel are signal to noise power ratio, usable bandwidth, amplitude and phase response and the statistical properties of noise. The two most important channel characteristics are the bandwidth and power and these constitute the primary communication resources available to any designer. The details of modulation and coding used in a digital communication system often depend on the characteristics of the channel as well as the application of interest. Other channel characteristics of particular concern are the degree to which the amplitude and phase response of the channel are determined, whether the channel is linear or nonlinear, and how free the channel is from the external interference. Right, with that brief discussion, I end this video on the basic digital communication system. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.